September the 11th, 2001 is one of those dates where if you were alive at the time, you remember where you were when you heard about what had happened. It was literally a day that changed the world. And now, as we approach the 20th anniversary of the event, the repercussions are still being felt. As it happened when I was around 20 years old, it's burned a place in my brain. For me, it was one of the first events to have rolling coverage on the news. Remember, this was a time before Facebook and social media, so the news was the only way to get information initially. And it wasn't until later, in the hours that followed, that more personal connections and information started to come through. Since then, there's been numerous books and documentaries about that day, and most of them take a zoomed out view of the events. However, a book entitled The Only Plane in the Sky, written by Garrett Graff, takes a different approach. As the subtitle of the book says, this is an oral history of 9-11. The author goes on to say in the introduction to the book, The only plane in the sky is not meant to be a precise account of how and why September the 11th occurred. Groups like the 9-11 Commission devoted years of work and millions of dollars to provide those answers. Instead, this book intends to capture how Americans lived that day, how the attacks in New York City, at the Pentagon, and in the skies over Somerset County, Pennsylvania, rippled across lives from coast to coast, from the Twin Towers to an elementary school in Sarasota, Florida, and how government and military officials on Capitol Hill, at the White House, in mountain bunkers, at air traffic control centers, and in the cockpit of fighter planes responded in an unprecedented moment to unimaginable horrors. The book has lofty goals, and if I'm being completely honest, I don't think it really pulled it off. Due to its layout, it comes off as quite disjointed. Rather than having someone tell their story from start to finish all in one go, their story is spread right across the whole day and split up and interwoven with lots of other people telling their story. This leads to the stories being hard to follow, and at times, the format even leads to some unintentionally hilarious sections, like this part where people are describing the sky that day. I found the first half of the book great. This is up to about where the crashes and the collapses have taken place. But after that, it began to drag for me. There's just too many stories all out of order and too many different people with different stories that don't all wrap up. It was hard to follow every single storyline. The result of this was that I often found myself having to flip backwards through the book to try and figure out who this person was that was speaking and where I should have known them from earlier in the book. I read this with a mix of physical book and audio book, and having to flick back and find a person was next to impossible in the audio book version. Needless to say, this all detracted from the message and the story that the book was telling. Overall, I think it is a good book, and it does a really good job of capturing the emotion of the day. But dang, the layout of it all was hard to follow, and you really have to work for it.